Hey everybody, it's GamaDex, and welcome to my very first call time draft. This video and the live stream happening on my Twitch channel after this recording are both taking place during the Early Access event, so thank you very much to Wizards of the Coast for providing me the account to play with here. With the disclosures out of the way, let's hop into this brand new draft format. Alright. Ooh, we're drafting with some people that I know. You're always in the big leagues whenever you hit up the Early Access events. This is, this is super exciting. Alright, let's get into this set. So here we have the Trickster God's Heist. This is a multicolored saga, so usually you don't want to take multicolored cards, pick one, but I think this one is pretty solid. You get to exchange control of two target creatures off of the first half. If that's the only thing you're doing, this card is fine. Switcheroo was super playable in older limited formats. That was a five mana sorcery to exchange two creatures. Obviously you want to exchange your weakest creature with their strongest creature. Trade like a 1-1 one -one token for a bomb. This card can do some really solid stuff. Arnie Slays the Troll, another fantastic saga. This one's like a prey upon with a lot of upside two mana one of your creatures fights an, op an opponent's creature so it's removal spell in that way then you're putting two counters on one of your creature and then you're gaining life after that too uh Terrigrid's shadow seems pretty solid too uh and this is a colorless card so i think i'm gonna or a colorless card a mono colored card so i think i'm gonna start with Terrigrid's shadow because it leaves me more open to any black deck this can be solid in being able to foretell this on turn three and then just cast it on turn four is really nice uh one of the biggest um one of the biggest things stopping you from foretelling, since it requires two mana to do so, uh, is that you're not able to curve out and foretell in the same turn. Like, you can't just play a two drop, play a three drop, and then cast this on turn four, because then you would never have had the mana to foretell it. But with a card like Terrigrid's Shadow, because you're making each player sacrifice two creatures, you don't want to be committing things to the board anyway, so taking your turn three off instead of playing a three mana creature is already what you want to be doing if you're planning on casting this and making everyone sacrifice two creatures. So I think this card is a really solid black card to start off the draft here. Uh, here we have Glimpse the Cosmos. This seems like just a solid draw spell uh, if you have any giants in your deck. Uh, Blood Sky Berserker. This is for the black-white deck. The black-white strategy is casting two spells in each turn, and this is a pretty big payoff for that, getting two plus one plus one counters every time you double spell. I think I'll go with Blood Sky Berserker here, but Great Hall of Starnheim seems really great as well. Some really solid uncommons here. All of the uncommon lands that have a three mana, or a three mana, a two color sacrifice ability seem really solid in this set. Uh, that one was you can pay double white and a black and sacrifice it to spit out a four four flying angel. That is a really great way to uh, cycle a land in the late game. So I think that card's super solid, but again, it's a two colored card and we can just take a really solid black card there and keep our second color open instead. So I do like the Jarl of the Forsaken and that is in our color. It's a 4-mana 3-2 with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, destroy a creature or Planeswalker and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. So it's a lot like there was a 4-mana 3-3 Pirate that just did this at sorcery speed back in uh, Ixalan, and that card was very solid. Um, this is just way better than that. It flashes, and you can potentially foretell it if you're not curving out turn 2 or turn 3, if you've ever got the extra mana, um, so that you can leave this up as an instant speed trick for only two mana in a later turn. That just seems really sweet all around. So I'm going to take the Jarl there. Uh, if we're taking an off-color card, maybe we take the random removal of Raven for him. Uh, Berg Strider seems like a really solid uh, creature. Five mana, four, four, and if you spent any snow mana on it, you get to tap one of their creatures down uh, and leave it tapped during their next turn. So that seems pretty solid. Uh, and there was also just some other random stuff there. So here's another one of these well, two more of these really solid multi-card lands here. This one you can sacrifice to deal three to a player and have your opponent discard a card, and it is in black red. It requires double red to do that, so we want to be heavy red for that. Uh, both of the red cards in this pack don't seem particularly playable. The giant is just a ton of mana, and omen paths is just like a one-turn ramp spell, so I don't think either of these are really high picks in red, so I don't know how red, how open red is uh, if I want to try to go black red there. And then uh, this is just really off-color, green and white required for for this one but it's solid as well uh, i think i'm just going to take another black card because these are both fine creatures two mana for a one one have each opponent discard a card and the five mana four four when it comes into play two creatures get plus one plus zero and indestructible till end of turn i'm going to pick up the elder fang disciple i think i definitely want a lot of cheap kind of creatures to try to do the double spell thing with blood sky berserker uh, if that ends up being uh, a build around that we go for uh, so i do like that a lot well this seems like a pretty late Frostbite for red, but it's also the only card in this pack, so... 
Not uh, the only red card in this pack. I'm not so sure if that means red is super open. And we've got some decent black cards here yet again. We have Wither Ground. Wither Crown's kind of a weird removal spell. Not the best removal spell, but it still seems solidly playable. It just turns whatever you enchant into a zero power creature. Uh, and if they want to keep it around, they have to keep losing a life every turn. So often if you use this on something small, small enough, they'll just sacrifice it. In an aggressive deck, it's not as good because they still get to keep it as a blocker. Um, Demonic Gifts, you can kind of like bring something back. I guess I'm going to scoop up the Frostbite here. Um, at the base level, at the absolute worst, if you have no Snowlands, this is just Shock, which has been solid in a lot of limited formats before, just one mana, instant speed, two damage. Um, and that seems pretty late for it, so maybe red is somewhat open here. Um, we'll have to see. Again, nothing uh, super spicy in red here. Three mana, three, two haste. Shackles of Treachery is active treason with a tiny bit of upside. You're stealing one of your opponent's creatures temporarily and giving it haste. And in red, black, there is a sacrifice sub theme. There are several black cards that allow you to sacrifice things. Uh, and some black-red cards that do, so Shackles of Treachery would be playable in that color scheme. Fearless Pup is good if you have um, other cards that care about boasting, but that's about it. What does this do? Ooh, Rootless U actually seems real sick. I kind of like the U there over the Rune of Flight. Um, I don't think I was going to end up taking a red card. All those red cards were pretty mediocre, and there was a really solid blue card and a really solid green card there in the uncommon slot. The Rootless U, 5 mana, 5, 4, and you search for a creature with power 6 or with toughness 6 or greater, reveal it, put into your hand, then shuffle. Curving out with this seems ridiculous. You cast this on turn 5, and then you grab a play for turn 6. It does require you to be playing a, a 6 toughness creature in your deck, but even with just one of them, I think this card seems really solid. I like that. I guess I'll just take Elderfang Disciple here. There's nothing really powerful in any of the other colors, it looks like. I mean, the gates, all of the non-basic lands I'm in love with, but this one is uh, white-blue. We're very far away from that. All right, well, not really seeing any green here, so maybe I should have just taken the Act of Treason in that other pack, um, because now we have a Sacrifice Outlet, Village Rites. One mana instant, sacrifice a creature and draw two cards. That works really solid in the black-red Sacrifice build. Um, four mana for a two, five. Each opponent loses X, where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that share a creature type, or you gain X, where X is the number. Eh, it seems not that great. I mean, a two, five is a big blocker, but I think I'd rather have, uh, just like may maybe the village rights here. Village rights is also just really good against enchantment based removal. There is a pacifism style effect in this set. Um, I forget the name exactly. Uh, bound in gold. There's a pacifism removal spell there. There's wither crown in black. We can just sacrifice our wither crown thing to draw two cards. So there's some removal that village rights is really nice against. I kind of like taking the snow land here, um, but craven hulk seems like a solid card for red. Demonic gifts can be a good combat trick because you're making your creature large enough to kill theirs and then you just bring it back from the grave. Actually, both of these seem pretty fine. <sighs> I'm going to take craven hulk. The main colors that really, really care about snow are uh, like blue-green decks and blue-black decks, because uh, there's a lot of blue that cares about snow, there's a lot of uh, green that cares about snow, um, and multicolored cards in those strategies that do. There's not a ton in like red, I would say, so if we do end up in Rakdos here, um, we would like the Snowland for like Frostbite, but that's, that's about it, and Frostbite is super fine even without it. I'm actually going to take the Great Hall of Starnheim here, because neither of these red cards are that great, and I think that this is just a really sick sacrifice effect if white ends up being open enough to just pivot in that instead. Only three mana. I guess it's technically four mana because you're tapping this as well. So you have to tap four of your lands to do it. But spitting out a 4-4 four, four flying angel off of your land card is just insane. All right, I'll take Shackles of Treachery here. We're in Rakdos and we have a Village Rites. So we have one sacrifice outlet for that deck. And Village Rites is solid in this deck, even without the Shackles, if we do pivot into Black-White, because we've got two 2-mana two 1-1s here uh, that we'd love to just, like, chump block and then sacrifice to Village Rites. Just take another Black card here, the Carfell Kennel Master. The Disciple or the Demonic Gifts? I'm pretty confident Black is, is well open here. I don't know which I want the most. I guess I already have two Disciples. Hmm. Scoop up a Gift. I guess I've seen a lot of these, so they'll probably... Both of those cards will probably be going late often. Now we get another Shackles. 
Well, I'm pretty convinced I'll be able to pick up any number of Shackles of Treachery that I want really late in these packs, so I kind of want to stick to Rakdos for that, um, rather than running this Great Hall of Starnheim. But that was really late in the pack, so we'll see. We do get a solid red rare here. Two mana for a 2 one. Other dwarves you control get plus one plus oh. That comes into play sometimes. I don't seeing that I don't see that coming to play super often in a black red deck. I don't think there's any black dwarfs. Um, and whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, you create a treasure token. So by itself, a two mana two one that creates a treasure token every time it attacks, that could still be okay. Plus, it's a rare. It's literally my first time ever playing with these cards, so I would like to, to play around with the rares and stuff, the stuff you don't get to play as often, so I think I'm taking that here. There's definitely an argument for, for pivoting into white-black, because there were some decent white cards late, and this went pretty late, this Great Hall of Starnheim, so maybe we just take, like, Valkyrie Sword or Kai's Onslaught, one of the decent white cards here, um... But we're also seeing, like, Shackles of Treachery just super late, so I think we can do a pretty sweet Rakdos Sacrifice build. I do love the dual land here, but our mana costs are not very prohibitive. We don't need double black until turn 5, potentially turn 4 if we foretell this. So I think, I think we don't need mana fixing that badly to take it pick 2 here over, like, a really solid um, little shock spell like Frostbite. Even the Jarl, I think that card can be really nice, so I am going to take the Frostbite here over that black-red duel, but I'd like to see that. So I actually want to look here, uh, if I've got time, at who I'm drafting with, because I know I definitely rec recognize some of these people. Scotty Nada, for sure, a very good drafter that uh, that I've watched their content quite a bit to, to get better at drafting. Uh, Manalik as well, I know of the Manalik. I haven't watched as much. And Nizahone, I believe I've heard of them as well. Some cool people, cool people in the draft pod. Um, Wither Crown. I'm not so excited about Wither Crown here because I do already have Tergrid's Shadow, two Frostbites, so I've got some better removal. Plus, with Shackles of Treachery, we would ideally be using these as removal spells as well. So I think I like probably the Tuscary Firewalker here. I guess Pyre of Heroes is like a sacrifice spell. It's a sacrifice outlet, but who knows how often we actually get to grab something off of this, especially if we're trying to use this to sacrifice our opponent's creatures. Like, the odds of sacrificing their creature and then actually getting something out of our deck don't seem that high. Maybe this will wheel, though, because this doesn't seem... This seems like a real build around. You do have to be tribal, but most of the creatures in this set, if you haven't noticed yet, have two creature types, like Human Rogue, Giant Rogue, Human Berserker. So it's not too hard to just randomly get cards that share a type, so maybe Pyre of Heroes is decent there, but I am going to take uh, the Tuscary Firewalker. This card seems super solid. Three mana for a 3-2 is not that great, because uh, with two toughness, you trade down into, like, two drop creatures, but... The boast ability on this seems really solid, so even if you're trading it down into a 2-drop, you're getting to draw a card off of it, essentially, with its boast ability. Even if it's a land, you can play that card. Since it says you may play that card instead of you may cast that turn, you do get to play the lands off the top as well, not just the spells. So I think this seems uh, like a really solid uh, card there. Now we have a Demonic Gifts. I guess I don't have a single Demonic Gifts yet, so I'll take that over a third Shackles of Treachery, and the Shackles of Treachery are all going to go really late, because I think the only deck that really wants this card is the Black Red Sacrifice deck. What do we have now? Again, this Open the Omen Paths. It's a one-time ramp. It does let you play like a four-mana creature on turn three, or a 5-mana creature on turn 4, but you're you're down a card to do that. And then only plus 1 plus 0 to all your creatures is just not that big of a buff. If this, if the other half of this was like Burn Bright, maybe you'd play this sometimes, but I think it's relatively unplayable. Um, I suppose it lets you splash creatures easier. Uh, Dread Rider's a ton of mana, but you could deal with having like one of these in your deck as a game ender. I think I'm going to take the Dwarven Hammer here. This is 3 mana for an equipment that gives equipped creature plus 3 plus 0 and trample, but if you pl pay the extra 2 mana for the other effect, it also just comes with a 2-1 attached to it. So for 5 mana, you're getting a 5-1 trample. That's not ideal, but you're keeping this hammer around, which actually makes every single one of your creatures in I like an actual threat uh, if you can throw this onto there. Even just throwing this onto one of our 1-1 one -one Elder Fang Disciples, all of a sudden we have a 4-1 Trampler on the field. So I actually uh, quite like the Dwarven Hammer in this deck. Um, Hailstorm Valkyrie is going to be really hard to trigger. 
you have to draft the snow lands for your deck, so we would need a lot of snow sources to consistently be able to spend two to even trigger this one time, so I think Hillstorm Valkyrie is definitely not the pick there. I'm just going to scoop up that, um, that second to scary Firewalker. Basically the same reason I took the first one. So here we have Village Rites, which would be our second card that lets us sacrifice things. I guess we could have an insane turn seven where we shackle something and then Terrigrid shadow them. <laughs> um, but yeah, Village Rites is basically our only sacrifice card. We could take the Snow-Covered Mountain for Frostbite, but I think we're just never relying on triggering that. Uh, but there's a decent rare here. You basically spit out like one card with it. I guess I'll take the rare. Same reason I took the Magda there. This is my first time in the set. I do love playing with the rares early so I can get as much experience with them as possible. Um... Because you just get less opportunities to play with them. But I don't think this card is that good. Three mana for an instant. Create X, two twos where X is the number of non-token creatures that died this turn. I guess this counts your opponent's creatures dying too. So that's not that bad. I mean, you attack in and if your if you're three two trades with their two two, then bam, just spit out two two twos for only three mana. And if you foretold this only one, yeah, this seems fine. It's not that hard to trigger and get two creatures uh, dead in one turn off of. Not a huge fan of the Dusk Wielder. Boast abilities you can only use once per turn, so I think that's just not great. I'm just going to take the Snow Land there. Just for the possibility of using it with Frostbite. Like, I think you can take the, the Snow Basics, like Snow Covered Swamps and stuff like that, um, pretty highly because of the fact that they're just always going to give you a mild advantage in your deck like just mildly helping something like frostbite maybe one time do its thing and um they're literally just a strictly better version of a card that you're already going to have tons of in your deck the basic lands so there's literally no way that you don't end up running the snow lands that you draft um even if you somehow don't get a single card that cares at all about snow, it's like, well, why not? <laughs> you know, I don't think there's anything. I guess there's like one or two like rares that hose snow, but that's about it. So the Pyre of Heroes did wheel, so we can try to steal our opponent's creatures, sacrifice them to the Pyre of Heroes, and then maybe get our own creature out of our deck. Like if we steal a coward, we can get our giant coward out. That's cute. Um, but more reasonably, if we steal a zombie, we've got like some big zombies. If we steal a berserker, there's plenty of berserkers in the format as well. This might actually happen one time. Um, and I think I'm going to go for it. That just seems like a, kind of a fun thing to try out. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh no. They really did it to him. Oh my god, we just opened the best possible card in the entire set to open when we're heavily into Rakdos going into pack 3. Oh my god, there is not much to say about this here. This is Tybalt, Cosmic Impostor. Absolutely bonkers card. If you're really stuck on mana, you can even just cast Valky, God of Lies, and that is a super solid card too. You exile a creature from their hand, and you could even... Um, turn your Valky into a copy of that creature. If you exiled their bomb, then Valky's still on the field by the time you get to the uh, the mana cost of their bomb. This card's just insane. Um, obviously, ridiculous, ridiculous Planeswalker there on the seven mana half, but even Valky is super solid. Wow. All right. Well, that feels pretty good. What do we have here? Fearless Pup would be our first like one mana creature. This is okay, it just doesn't seem fantastic. Immerstrom Raider, when it enters the battlefield, discard a card, draw a card. How many creatures do I have right now? Got 12 creatures, I do want to start scooping up a little more, I think. At the same time, none of these creatures are stuff that I really like. I guess I have, in red-black, there are quite a few Berserkers, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Got five Berserkers already. I guess, you know... I'm actually going to take Fearless Pup. I was thinking about maybe taking the Bloodline Pretender. That's kind of a tribal lord for whatever tribe you choose when you cast it. Then every creature you cast of that type comes in with a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, but the Fearless Pup, it's just another one mana card. I can just dump it out on turn three with a lot of two drops and some one drops. That makes the, um, the Blood Sky Berserker actually pretty reasonable to trigger 
uh, pretty often. Because you play this on turn two, and then turn three, I just play like a Fearless Pup and an Elder Fang Disciple, and bam, my Blood Sky Berserker gets the two counters, turns into a 3-3 three, three there. So another Shackles of Treachery, or a Firewalker, Grim Draugr. Infernal Pet doesn't seem that great to me, unless you can really consistently cast second spells. I like the Firewalker a little better, I think. Shackles of Treachery is fine as well, and I guess we didn't wheel that other Shackles that other game or that other pack. Death Knell Berserker. This card works pretty great with demonic gifts. I only have the one demonic gifts, so that's mostly just going to be a two mana two two. I do have a decent amount of stuff at two mana here. Not super excited about that. I think I prefer just another Craven Hulk here. Can't block alone, but like a four mana four four on curve, that is just a really solid attacker. Just a nice beater. Send that in. Black Red Dual Land, I love that, but there's also Demon Bolt, which is really good. That's probably the best red common in the set. Three mana for an instant to do four damage to target creature or planeswalker is already incredibly solid. And you can also foretell this anytime you have the extra mana to do that. That way, whenever you're casting it in the future, it's only costing one red mana. Incredibly solid card. So I will take that over the Dual Land. Feed the Serpent seems like a really solid removal spell. Four mana for instant speed, exile a creature or planeswalker. We could take the Snow-Covered Mountain, could take the Squash, but I think that the Feed the Serpent's just going to be better than both of those. Just a little better than Squash because we don't... I guess with Craven Hulk we could cast Squash for three less. That's only two mana to do six at instant speed. Eh, there's a little bit of an argument for Squash here, but I like the card that's just more unconditional. And since it's exiling them, our opponent can't then try to bring them back with something like Raise the Draugr. Um, so exiling is relevant as well. Shackles of Treachery or Jarl of the Forsaken, I think, are my favorite two cards here. Kind of want to just take another Jarl. I like that card a lot. We'll pick up a second one of that. I think we have enough just random tribal synergies that Pyre of Heroes is probably playable. Uh, I'm definitely running it no matter what just because it's cute, but uh, it might actually do some things every once in a while. I don't want too many expensive cards here, so I don't know if I want a third Carnal or Carfell Kennel Master. Definitely not the Priest, I just don't have enough Snowlands for that. Maybe another Fearless Pup, help trigger Blood Sky Berserker. Or a Dusk Wielder would be another one mana creature, but I think the pup's a bit better than that. This boast ability is just a lot more threatening to your opponent. Just leaving three mana up, your opponent's almost never going to block this, because a 3 1 first striker can kill almost anything that would try to block it until like turn four. So I like the, the pup a little better than just draining my opponent for one every now and then. Eh, Tread Rider, Longboat. I don't know here. I guess I'll take a Longboat. We did wheel the shapeshifter. Oh, oh, I misread this card. This card is not as good as I thought. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on this, not the creature that came in. Still seems interesting. I might try it out there. There was an argument for just like the two mana two one to have a really aggressive curve and also help with stuff like Blood Sky Berserker yet again. Definitely taking the shackles here. With Pyre of Heroes, I'm I'm really going to try to do the thing. That would be really cute. I guess I didn't end up with a whole ton of Sacrifice Outlets, so it might end up a little awkward. We'll see. This card seems pretty bad. Only one Toughness on turn three. I'm going to take the, uh, the combat trick, the run amok over that. Last pick, Shackles. Cool. We could run five <laughs> or four. Four or five, four. We could run four Shackles of Treachery here. That seems probably incorrect. So we have a lot of leeway to make some cuts in our first ever Kaldheim deck. I gotta say, for my first ever Kaldheim deck, I'm really excited about this one. There are some, some cute things to do here. All right. What do we do? I don't really love... How many creatures did I end up with? 19? I don't want to cut too many creatures, but I do want to cut Coma's Faithful. I mean, just one toughness. We're not really getting any value off of the mill. I suppose it helps us with, like, Raise the Draugr. But, nah, I'm going to cut the Coma's Faithful there. I think I just leave in the rest of the creatures. I have to make 13 cuts. 
Good lord. Maybe we're not doing the, uh, the stealing our opponent's stuff and sacrificing as much as I was hoping for. Um, we'll take out the draw spell here. I guess Dorvin Hammer's kind of like a five mana creature a lot of the time, so we'll put that up there on the curve. And this is like four mana a lot, so we'll put it there. Rise of the Dread Marn. I think that's definitely going to stay in. I want to try it out. It's a rare. I'll take out the Longboat. Well, with triple, like, Elderfang Disciple as 1-1s, with two Fearless Pops as 1-1s, Longboat actually seems decent here. Because then, once they start playing 2-2s two and 3 two stuff, we still get to get value out of these by actually turning them into 3-3s three and attacking. Having them crew our boat. Sure, I'll keep the boat in for now, but... I have to make a lot of cuts, so I'm not so sure uh, that it will stay in. 12 cuts. My lord. I really don't want to cut the pyre and the shackles, but I think if I was just trying to make the best deck possible, I might just cut pyre, cut four shackles. <laughs> Let's see. One... Just make the best deck possible here. It probably looks something like... Mm. Got a Dwarven Hammer on 5. We've got Valky at 7, potentially, if we're casting Tybalt. So we cut like that. Cut probably a land. One, two more cuts. Hmm. This format is hard. <laughs> I have a hard time time cutting down my decks in every format, but I'm already just like, wow. There's so much fun, just random solid stuff here. I guess Magna did not end up doing really anything in this deck. We don't have any other dwarfs. We do have that three mana changeling if I throw that back in, but... Maybe we're just not playing uh, Feed the Serpent because it's kind of a slower removal spell. We've got a lot of quicker ones. Double Frostbite, Demon Bolt. Try to go quick on the curve. Double Yara the Forsaken as well. This card's actually really solid with the Fearless Pups. We can first strike into their creature and then kill it before it deals damage to our pup. So I think I'm definitely leaving a double pup for that. Yeah, maybe we are taking Feed the Serpent out, and then maybe Magda. This curve is kind of awkward without Magda, though. Definitely running pretty low on, like, two mana stuff. Average 2.6 here. We've got Fertel stuff. I think we can definitely cut the land that I did. Well, you know what? We're going to go, we're going to go competitive with it. We're going to run with this build. Let's let's not do the quadruple shackles of tre treachery uh, pyre of heroes thing. Oops. That is not how you spell creature. There's an S on that. Trying to see... Let's look at what's in our sideboard in here. To see what we could put back in. Like how we could change things. Our black that we've cut is just Coma's Faithful and Feed the Serpent and a f uh, Kennel Master. I think I'm fine with that. Our red that we cut seems mostly bad. I'm just trying to see if we want to keep Magda in. What do we take out? Maybe cut one Elder Fang and keep Magda in. Because Magda can ramp you up from two to four. And that actually looks kind of okay here. We could ramp up... Turn two Magda, turn four Craven Hulk, just start getting in with a or turn three Craven Hulk, start getting in with a four four. And if Magda trades for something that's super solid, if they play like a three three to block Magda, that'll be really sad. But if they have like a three two or a two two, anything like that, just trading Magda off and spinning out Craven Hulk turn four or turn three seems super solid. Yeah, I'm gonna cut an Elder Fang Disciple and throw um, throw Magda back in. Elder Fang Disciple is really cute with Demonic Gifts, but we only have the one of that. It's fine with Village Rites too. Just gives us kind of a kind of a bad creature for the late game, but I think we've got plenty of creatures that are already going to be bad in the late game. Uh, just trying to draw into like Valky or something at that point. Um, 
Did I accidentally put a card back in? Why are there 41? 16, 17. One of my lands popped back in. <laughs> Get out of here. I said 16 lands. So what are our colors? 12, 12. Exactly even split. So there goes one swamp. We've got an 8, 8 exact split here. I have two red one mana creatures, but then I have a ton of black cards on turn two. I guess three of them are, are creatures we're just playing out. I'm fine with the even split. All right. Let's, uh, let's see if they actually have any fancy lands on the, the VIP accounts. They don't. Do they have the call time basics? Where are the call time basics? Oh, there they are. Yeah, get that in here. You gotta run the call time basics. It's the first time pretty much anybody's playing the set on Arena, at least. Uh, Loading Ready Run has done their, their pre-release, and I'm sure tons of Wizards employees have already played with it a lot. All right. Seems sick. Are there any sleeves on here? There's some. Some kind of cool ones. We'll just go with the Bolas. The classic Bolas sleeves. Well, here's our just Rakdos aggressive deck. We sort of had a black-red sacrifice thing going on, but we didn't end up with a ton of sacrifice outlets, so I didn't end up... Is that Numat the Nummy? Oh my god. I'm about to get absolutely slapped. Um, anyways. <laughs> we had a, a bit of a Rakdos sacrifice thing going on, but we didn't actually end up with a ton of sacrifice outlets for our four shackles, so I don't think that that was a thing I wanted to do. I'm gonna mulligan here. Only one color is pretty awkward. I can keep this, and I think I don't want all of these Disciples. Bloodsky Berserker is awkward in this hand. Berserker is just really bad if you don't double spell at least one time to turn it into a 3-3. Um, so maybe I do keep one of these Disciples, cut the Craven Hulk out, because now I'm really trying to draw a one mana spell like a Fearless Pup to be able to double spell, or even a Shock. I'm going to get rid of... I could even just get rid of the Berserker. Yeah, I guess I'm getting rid of the Berserker. That seems a little too all-in to try to hit a one-mana card there. I just don't have a lot. This game board is absolutely stunning. I am so excited for this. My apologies about the um, phone notification. I'm going to turn that off right now. But yeah, this, this game board is just incredible. Super into that. Elder Fang Disciple isn't really going to block anything. I'm just going to foretell here. Now we can cast Yarl for only two mana at instant speed later. Skem Far Avenger seems like a real solid rare. Whenever another non-token elf or berserker you control dies, they draw a card and lose a life. And so far, that Sculptor of Winter is an elf. So... Green Black Elves, it looks like, from Numat. So, I can cast Magda, I can cast the Firewalker, or I can just instant speed cast the Jarl. Disciple's fine here, too. They only have three cards in hand, so they probably have to cast something decent, and the Disciple blocks their 3 1 well. That's the only thing they're probably attacking with. They're probably still just ramping with the Sculptor. So, I'm just gonna drop the Elder Fang Disciple. Discard in a land. They got a lot of lands over there. Grizzled Outrider, 5-5 five, five Elf. All right, 5-5 five, five Elf Warrior. One card in hand makes me really want to just play another Disciple. And pass turn. I'm going to auto pass this turn and then auto pass their turn, so maybe it's not so obvious that I have Jarl. Because if I had Jarl and I wasn't auto-passing right now, uh, it would be stopping every time they do something. Now it won't stop until it goes to blocks. I'm not going to want to play the Jarl unless they go to blocks anyway. Because I'm going to want to flash it in and kill Grizzled Thing. Well, that's uh, real awkward. The auto-passing did just stop right there. <laughs> um... They really don't want the Skemfar Avenger to die in combat here. I could block the Grizzled Outrider and kill it with the Jarl, but then... 
the Skemfar Avengers still around, and they're drawing cards every time one of their elves dies, and their whole deck's gonna be elves, so I think I can't afford to let them draw a ton of cards. So I'm gonna stop auto-passing, and I think... I think I just... I guess I could have played the 3-2 traded with the Sculptor killed the Avenger. That might have been the best play there. Hmm. I don't think I'm killing anything here. I think I just take seven. Let's kill the Avenger. Village Rights is the draw. Got a 5-5 five five over there, one card in hand. Should play a Craven Hulk. It can't block alone, but it can double block with the Disciple to kill their Outrider. Or double block with the Jarl and only one of those two dies. Yeah. If they have a removal spell, they just throw it at the Jarl. That seems generally bad. Hopefully they don't have removal. Let's just get in for one. Double block the Grizzled Outrider if they offer the trade. Ooh. Binding the Old Gods, a very great removal spell there. Well, let's trade with the Sculptor. Then they just have the 5-5 five five out. This is going to grab them a Forest, and then on the third, all their creatures gain Death Touch, but it's just a 5-5 five five on their field anyway, so that's already big enough to deal with anything I have. Um, play a Firewalker and a Fearless Pup. I could triple block the Outrider. Okay, well, the auto-tapper actually just held up Village Rites mana instead. So I guess I'm blocking with Elderfang Disciple and sacrificing that to Village Rites. And we gotta make sure not to let the auto-tapper do things ever again. That being said, I was very unlikely to try to triple block here. Because I really want to get the boast trigger out of the Firewalker. Ooh, Demon Bolt's gonna be really solid with Fearless Plus... Fearless Pup plus Demon Bolt will allow me to uh, kill Grizzled Outrider before it damages my stuff. So, raise the Draugr's a pretty fine draw as well. Let's just drop down a Fearless Pup and pass the turn. Just hold up blocks here. We could foretell the Demon Bolt, but then I think it's even more obvious, and it costs just as much mana. One mana to foretell it, and then... Or two mana to foretell it, and one mana play it. That's three mana total. And it is three mana to play the Demon Bolt in the first place. The Draugr can get menace, so it hits me for four here, which is pretty bad. But I am going to play as many blockers as I can next turn. Blizzard Brawl. Choose a creature you control and creature you don't control. They have three snow permanents, so it gains indestructible here too? Oh my god. That is an incredible play here. Um, I can get rid of indestructible if I demon bolt the Draugr, but it's still just going to be too big. It takes three right now, and then it only takes one more from the pup. So there's no reason to get rid of Indestructible, right? I guess I could threaten, like, a, another spell to do something there. Sure, yeah, I think that just happens. No reason to threaten. We're going to have to chump block with the pup. Doesn't get trample, right? No, it doesn't get trample. Suppose I don't have to chump block with the pup. I take six, I go to two life. Let's go to two. Let's be bold about it. Because now I can raise the Draugr at instant speed. If I hit a land there, I could raise the Draugr at instant speed, pick up Jarl of the Freysaken, and kill their 5-5 five five with it. That would have been a really solid play. But unfortunately, I did not draw land here. Demonic Gifts is pretty good. Demonic Gifts with Magna and the Pup would be enough. Raise the Draugr picks up an Elder Fang Disciple. Or... So you could pick up two Giants, two Cowards. It's not going to pick up two things here. 
I don't think we're we're casting Raise the Draugr and casting something here. I think we just play Magda and go for a Demonic Gifts kill. They've really got to just draw nothing here. And then we're planning to raise the Draugr and hope for value by picking up two Berserkers. Try to win the value game. If they just drew another removal spell, we're... I guess we're not just dead still, but we're in a really bad spot. Let's go for it. I try to resurrect the pup because Magda's a berserker, so we can pick up two things with Magda. Plus, if pup is still on the field, we can use Raise the Draugr at instant speed and pick up the uh, zombie cleric, the Jarl of the Forsaken, to kill another creature without losing the pup. Ooh, if we just draw into Jarl of the Forsaken, then I'm 100% cool just raising the Draugr and dropping a 3-drop here, I think. I don't want to attack in, really, for one. So I'll pick up my two Berserkers. Dwarf Berserker and Human Berserker. Play the one that lets us draw a card every turn and try to stabilize off that. Get a lot of card advantage. Got two cards in hand. Here comes Herald, King of Skemfire. That can draw a lot of cards. Look at the top five. Put all the Elves, Warriors, and... Uh, oh, I guess they take one Elf, Warrior, or Tyvar card. All right. And they grab a 3-2. So getting two creatures there is pretty bad for me, especially because one has Menace. I have five mana here. I don't have enough mana to cast this Jarl if I play anything else. And they know I have Magda in hand, so playing the Jarl, or holding up the Jarl is going to be very obvious. I think I just play as many creatures as possible here and just do the Jarl next turn. If they have the little 1-1 elf that makes me discard a card, then this, this ends pretty poorly. But I want to get a lot of creatures on this board, so I'm not dead to a removal spell. If I hold up the Jarl of the Forsaken, I just die. Because they have a 3-2 menace and I only have two creatures on the board. So that's just not an option there. But I could have played the Firewalker and foretold the Jarl. Or played Magda and foretold the Jarl. That would definitely be the best alternate route there. All right, yeah. With the way down, I played it as best as I could because now I can still block both of their creatures. I will have to lose my whole field here, but at least I don't die. Uh, I have to block both their creatures. Is there anywhere I can double block and not lose to? No, they've got one toughness. I just can't. So let's just... Um, doesn't really matter, I suppose. I don't know why this is so hard in my brain. Just make sure Harold dies, I guess. Throw a ton of damage on that. And they're going to grab a land with the Horizon Seeker's Boast ability. Again, this is my first time playing with all of these cards, so there are a lot of things that I'm I'm just noticing as I play. Ooh, Grimdraugr is really threatening. I need to hit removal. That's not going to be it. That is not going to be it. Are my emotes disabled? They are. Alright, well there goes game one. I think it was a solid fight. Um, there were several turns there where I think I could have started maybe stabilizing and getting a lot of value um, out of like my 3-2 that boasts and lets me draw extra cards, but they just kept drawn into the solid, solid cards that just kept expanding the board and really putting the pressure on, making me make those double blocks and triple blocks and stuff. So, rough way to start it off, but... I think, I think overall that was a decent showing from our deck. Alright, up against Scotty Nada. Alright, we'll just play against some incredible drafters that play and stream all of the time. 
I'm scared, that's for certain. I can't get over how beautiful this board is. It is so nice. So I'm going to try to probably hold on to Tybalt till turn 7, because uh, that seems really good. I only have 3 mana here. I do have to draw 4 more lands, but I have village rights to draw 2 more cards at some point in this game. Alright, are they on Death Touch Tribal? Try to poison me out. I get 2 poison counters whenever that hits me. That's really scary. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to play the Elder Fang Disciple. We can play like a 3-2 and try to trade into the 1-3 Death Toucher. Uh, but I'm scared. I am scared about just taking 10 poison damage. They discard a Vault Robber there. Not going to chump block there. We have two poison. And the path to the World Tree has been revealed. Search for basic, reveal it, put into your hand, shuffle. And if they spend one mana of every color, they gain two life, draw two cards. Each opponent loses two life, it does two to a creature, and they get a 2-2 bear. They're on five color? Black, red, duel, and then a green and a blue? Alright, this is gonna be interesting. That's pretty exciting. I'm gonna play the 3-2 here so I can trade with Finn, uh, so that Finn probably doesn't attack in. The music on this board is really nice too. Ice Hide Troll for two mana, two snow mana specifically. It gets plus two, plus zero, oh, indestructible till end of turn, and they tap it. They have one snow mana right now, so that probably won't come into play soon. Frostbite is okay, but it's not good against these three toughness creatures. I guess I get to play Magda and hold up Frostbite. It's probably the best route. Could play Magda and hold up uh, Village Rights, but don't think we're doing that one. Could have sent in the Firewalker, because trading with either of those seems fine. Just pass turn. There's my fourth mana for a Craven Hulk. Could be five mana when I attack with Magda. Where's my average mana cost? How many, um... How many, like, 4 drops and 5 drops do I have? I feel like I don't have a lot, so attack with Firewalker, maybe boast to draw a card here. I should not have played a land first if my plan was to attack. So that is, uh, that is a bit awkward. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna hold off again. We'll play a Craven Hulk. Next turn, I think. Definitely if I don't draw land, I want to send in with Firewalker, hoping to just hit a land off of it. Demon Bolt the Craven Hulk. Alright. Goodbye, my friend. Alright, they're stuck on mana as well. Let's send in the Firewalker then, I guess. Ice Hide Troll's gonna block for the trade. See what we hit. A land, not bad. We don't have the snow permanence to do three damage with the Frostbite. So we'll just take the trade. Two more mana away from Valky. I'm at four mana. I can't play the hammer. I haven't played a spell here yet. So if I play Blood Sky Berserker, I really want to play another spell to follow it up. But I could go for double spell next turn. Dorvin Hammer and Village Rites. Yeah, that seems fine. Seize the spoils. Well, that is going to get them out of the mana screw position they're in. And they get a treasure token, which can sacrifice for any color of mana for their five color nonsense. Raise the Draugr. I'm going to village rights, and I really hope to draw land so that I can also cast Dwarven Hammer. For five. Perfect. Throw that mana in, send in the Blood Sky Berserker. There's an argument for just sacrificing Magda there so that I can play Loki next turn. Or Loki. Wow. <laughs> really, really going with the direct correlations there with the God of Lies. No, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. But I like my Magda. I like keeping all my cards out. That probably would have been the best play. I mean, just throwing 
throwing Tybalt on this board, I don't see what could possibly go wrong. Oh my god. Binding the old gods could go wrong. If they have that. If they have a second copy. So they could kill my hammer, or they could kill my Blood Sky Berserker. I see an argument for either of those. I don't think they kill Magda, but I do have a dwarf token. So I'm getting two treasures if I attack there. Alright, they kill the Berserker. One mana from... From Tybalt. What does Tybalt do? Exile an artifact or creature, or the top card of each player's library, and goes to seven loyalty? Maybe I do just attack with everybody here and use the treasure for Tybalt. Let's do it. I actually have enough treasure from this that I can also Frostbite if they block Magda. Alright, we'll trade there. And let's go, Tybalt. Tybalt went from, like, the worst card in the set last time he was printed to the best card in the set. Or, first time he was printed, I should say. Well, I've got a Jarl here, too. I guess I could foretell it if I sacrifice that treasure token. Uh, but I also like having raised the uh, raise the Draugr here. I can pick up Tuscary Firewalker and Bloodsky Berserker. I'm probably going to do that in their end step. The fact that this card is instant speed is so solid. Usually these kinds of effects are sorcery speed. Ooh, binding the old gods to to kill Tybalt. What what is Valky? Valky's a god. All right. Well, I'm going to pick Valky up. This is going to be really sad for Scotty Nada. I'm really going to want to watch back this. Uh, this draft at the end after I've done this recording I want to see their reaction to this because that's just mean all their creatures get death touch on the final mode so that really just doesn't do much <laughs> I, have share in my I have two Tybalt albums right now don't I technically yeah I do that's hilarious I like holding up Frostbite here, just in case some kind of 7-1 haste. I don't know, that probably doesn't happen. But I do not know the set well enough. Really don't need the Jarl. They're at nine lives, so they're getting pretty close to dead. They know... They know what we have exiled. They are all exiled face up. So they know we can cast all this stuff throughout the game. They're gonna path to the world tree. Sure, kill the Magda. Get a bear. Do I want to shoot a bear? I don't have anything with haste, so I'm not really... Rise of the Dreadmarn, that will be cool later. I'm not going to exile the bear also. Probably play a 6-6. Six, six. Ooh, you can only foretell from your hand. Never mind, that makes me feel not as bad about that whole situation. Elder Fang Disciple or not Vold Recluse? I like just holding up Demon Bolt. Or the uh, the shock. So I just shock the bear if they send it at anything. I guess if they send it at Tybalt. I mean, Tybalt gets to exile all graveyards, so I just draw like a million. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, never mind. I am going to ultimate Tybalt next turn. That's insane. Exile all cards from all graveyards. That means I can just have them all in my hand, potentially. <laughs> Yeah, this is my first time using Tybalt. I knew Tybalt is insane, but... Uh, yeah, this is ridiculous. I guess I get to I get to just Frostbite their bear, because any removal spells that I use right now, I'm just going to redraw with Tybalt's ultimate on my next turn when I use that. I guess I would redraw the worm as well, but that's just... Ooh, Trample, Haste, Vorinclex. Okay. 
they do have a big old haster to to send at Tybalt if they want it to. Well, I guess I just trade there. Never mind. Ooh, Arnie slays the troll. Okay. Sure. I do get to kill Vorinclex with my, my Frostbite now, or my Demon Bolt, so Tybalt definitely survives, but Tybalt does take two now. Oh, they get two counters on it too. They get both of the parts because Vorinclex ability putting another counter on it. Interesting. Oh, and it gets twice the counters. Vorinclex just going off. What is this? Still still within Demon Bolt range, so we're okay. Still within Demon Bolt range. But they have two mana up now. They've got one and a treasure. Just for Telecard, okay. Yeah, send there. We Demon Bolt Vorinclex. Plus Tybalt again, Path to the World Tree, Elder Fang, Jarl, not Vold Recluse. And these cards all are kind of jank. Kind of want to just play a big card like the Fellmaster. Got four mana up after that. I guess, I guess I don't need to do that. Let's just play all this stuff. Because these cards are all hidden, which is like slightly better. Get a land with the path here. And then I have five mana up after that, so I can play Jarl. I can also play the Recluse and, and hold up Jarl. Sure, we'll do that. We're probably just going to play the Jarl, whatever happens here. I think they're going to scoop. Alright, that's the scoop. Yeah, we didn't have a quick way to win, but... I mean, Tybalt's ultimate and just playing a million cards a turn because we're drawing like 50,000 off of Tybalt from both players' decks. It's just definitely a solid way to get there. That feels really mean. I, I really enjoy Scotty Nate's content. If you haven't heard of them, they're on Twitch primarily. And they have... Uh, they're a very skilled drafter. Lots of great commentary uh, if you're interested in competitive drafting on Arena. Alright. Well, it is awkward. No 2-drop, no 3-drop, but we can just forsake, or forsake, foretell two Jarl of the Forsakens on turn 2 and turn 3. So, if our opponent's really aggro, we're going to have a hard time, but... I don't think it's worth a mulligan. We have both of our colors. Got a decent amount of stuff going on after after turn two. If we really have to, we can play the first Jarl that we foretell on turn three, because it only costs two to cast after we uh, foretell it. Play Shimmer Drift Veil for red. So they're a red-green deck. They can sacrifice this later in the game to make a 4-4 Troll Warrior with Trample. That seems really solid. Well, let's play our snow land, be all fancy. Svela the Ice Shaper. 2-4 for 3 mana, they can tap it and create a manolith that can tap for a mana of any color. That's also a snow artifact, so it adds snow mana. And for 7 mana, they look at the top 4 and cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. I think Svela's really solid. It's kind of like an uncommon version of Golos. Like, it's not as strong as Golos, but when you get to that repeatable ability in the late game, it, it kind of is. Um, and it even spits out the mana like Golos does in the early game. Really solid card. Um, there's no reason to dump a Jarl out against a 2-4, so I'm just going to foretell another card. Double Craven Hulk is pretty nice. That was a pretty solid draw. Just start sending in with 4-4s. Four Hopefully scare them to death. Snow-covered island, so they are blue, green, and red so far. All of the mana fixing and ramp over here. 
really solid stuff. Could play two Jarls at instant speed, but I think I prefer a Craven Hulk. So our opponent has tons and tons of mana from Svela. They have seven mana next turn. Eight if they're casting... If they're foretelling cards or casting instants and sorceries, there is the Demon Bolt against my Craven Hulk for exactly four damage. Well, let's play another Craven Hulk. Holding up our Frostbite. So, we don't know for sure what they're ramping into. They might have like a big ramp card in their hand, but even just ramping into the second ability on Svela is incredibly solid, casting the best card out of your top four every turn. Svela can definitely single-handedly win the game here. I could Frostbite and kill it with Jarl. Sure, they tap that down. All right. I think I'm gonna be on that plan. I'm actually gonna cast Frostbite and Jarl to kill Svela so that they can't just start casting things for free. Because they have five, six, seven, eight. They have enough mana for the ability now if I let them untap. Yeah, I don't love that. I could also double Frostbite, but that seems definitely worse than just Frostbite, you're all. Again, we're doing it now because if I let them untap, they can just use that ability in response. They still got all the ramp out of it if they have any large, expensive cards, but if they didn't have anything else to ramp into, if they were just planning on using Svela's ability, then we're we're doing fine. All right, ramping into a 6-6 six, six isn't bad for us. We can Frostbite Jarl that, too. Which be Frostbite Jarl deck. Um, I don't know if I want to do that or if I want to try to get, get one up on them with Demonic Gifts, because I could also kill it with Demonic Gifts. Probably not. I can save that for later. They could double block one and then I Demonic Gifts kill both. So I guess it all depends on what's in their hand. So I want to hold the Demonic Gifts in case they have something scarier, because then a 3-2 still attacks into a 1-3 fine. And then we're just in a top, a top deck war. Nah, let's just do it. Let's just kill all the stuff. Kill all of the things. This is just Jarl of the Forsaken dot deck. I am loving that card so far. See what they got. Two cards in hand. I'm hoping just more lands. Oh no, I forgot about this land making a 4-4. So anytime they run out of things to do in hand, they can just make a 4-4 trample. I probably should have held on to that Demonic Gifts then. Ooh, they destroy a land with it too. Destroy my snow swamp. Rude. Didn't even notice that part. Avalanche Caller. Oh my god, I'm in a world of hurt now. Well, now even if I held onto the demonic gifts, I would probably be in a really bad spot. Ooh. Yeah, not holding onto demonic gifts was incredibly bad here. I should have read the land. If all they had was the land, it wouldn't be that bad. But the fact that they had a land and another card that I really need to kill. Oh, they got a giant's amulet afterward too. So this for two mana, they make their Snowlands 4-4s four that just beat my face down. Um, so if I still had Demonic Gifts, I could like block this, turn it into a 5-2 uh, to kill that, and then get back my 3-2 to block that at least. I guess I couldn't really do it in a way that would kill two creatures off of the Demonic Gifts because I would only have one Jarl if I didn't Demonic Gifts last time. Maybe I just shouldn't have attacked. There were definitely some, some decent lines to do. I don't think I'm blocking there. Fearless Pup. That is really good with Jarls, but I've got them all on the board. I 
I think our opponent is about to beat our face with some lands. They don't even need the lands because they've got a giant from the giant's amulet as well. I just got tons of tons of beef. Ooh, Marit of the Frost copies whatever creature they want with two plus one plus one counters on it. Opponent's deck is sick. Yeah, this is really solid stuff going on. I'm a fan. Good stuff, opponent. I guess I can kill one of their lands, maybe. And just hold on to a 3-2, take 8. Probably just dead. Definitely just dead. That was really solid stuff from our opponent. We definitely made a misplay there with the... Probably even just attacking with the Jarls was too bold. We should have just held on to the Jarls and held on to the Demonic Gifts. But they had like one, in car, one card in hand, so I was like, how bad could this be? But I didn't realize that they actually had a land on the board that, uh, that was spitting out a large threat. So they essentially had two cards that could be uh, really big threats. And then my opponent just drew well, so they had like four really massive threats. Um, so yeah, that just really blew up in our face as as poorly as it could have uh, gone at the end there after the uh, the misplay of an attack. All right, up against Profumatu, another streamer that I have heard of. They do, uh, they speak a language I do not speak, though, so I haven't really watched them. Alright, foretell a Terragrid's Shadow turn two for later in the game. Seems super solid. If my opponent curves out with an aggressive build, we can just cast Terragrid's Shadow. And if they don't, just drop out a Craven Hulk turn four. Start getting there with a 4-4. Four, four. Opponents on blue-red, the main blue-red archetype is Giants. Seems like a really fun deck, it's like Frost Giants and stuff. Stuff that cares about Giants, some stuff that cares about Wizards, and uh, the, the Giant synergies in blue-red there, they, um, they have some stuff that like cares about dealing excess damage to your opponent's creatures, so like overkilling your opponent's cards, like doing 4 damage to a 1-1 one -one or something, like if you do overkill damage then you get to draw a card, stuff like that, that's just really cool. We're definitely not killing a 2-1 here. I think the blue-red decks will be pretty fun in this format. Play a Pilfering Hawk, cool. Terrigrid's Shadow is an instant, so I just play a land and pass here. But I guess the Shadow... Killing a 2-1 and a 1-2 just doesn't seem that fantastic, and against a blue-red deck, they're likely to have, like, big threats later. So I kinda wanna just... I could f I could foretell the Jarl and hold up a Demon Bolt, or I can play just a Craven Hulk. I think I'm just gonna play a Craven Hulk, and we're just not gonna cast Terrigrid's Shadow until they've wiped my field out with removal spells of their own, and maybe played bigger, scarier stuff. Ideally, we can clear out their small creatures within combat and using small spells like Demon Bolt, and then we can hold on to Terragrid's Shadow for their big creatures. Two mana, one of which is Snow, they foretell a card. Send in the Immerstrom Raider, sure. Wait, is it meta? Oh yeah, the Craven Hulk can't block alone. Can't block by itself. We're gonna be attacking in with it. I guess they're demon bolting? Okay, I don't know why they're foretold that then. Because they could, like now I can just village rights. Which I could not have done otherwise, so that's really solid. draw a frostbite to kill their pilfering hawk. I like that. Ooh, and a blood sky berserker. That would be my second card this turn, so unfortunately I can't cast blood sky berserker and then frostbite uh, to put more counters on it, um, but I'm still gonna do that so I can put more counters on it later, I think. Plus I could trade with, like, their raider. 
This is the third spell we're casting this turn, so Frostbite's not going to put any counters on Berserker. But I'm still going to Frostbite before they untap. So that is one of the things about Fortel that is a little interesting. You pay two and exile it face down. You can cast it on a later turn. You can't cast it the turn you Fortel. So on, on some things like the Demon Bolt, sometimes you just want to do it main phase, like before your opponent untaps in case I had something like Village Rites. All right. Well, they have two creatures again. They have a Foretold card and a card in hand. I could just wipe the board. But again, they're small stuff. I have a Demon Bolt Foretold. Maybe I just Fortel a Jarl. I really want to hold on to this Valky for late game. That would be super solid. I guess I'm going to foretell a Jarl. Just have everything foretold. Could have Demon Bolted during my turn to get them to not like draw a card and discard a card, but maybe they'll play a creature uh, that I want to kill more here. Like that. Definitely going to do four damage to that creature. They are giving uh, plus and plus O and haste to their whole field no matter what, but I'm just going to kill it. So the rest of the field does hit me for more damage now. Okay, five mana means I can play a five four down, and then they just have the pilfering hawk. Could also play the shadow, but again, I love holding on to that. Got a 4-4 four, four down now to block their 2-1. Now I just have to worry about the Pilfering Hawk being able to draw and discard cards. Oh no, Berg Raider's really bad for me. Hmm. I can play 3 mana for Firewalker and 2 for Jarl, or I can make them sacrifice 2 creatures. If I make them sacrifice 2 creatures, they have a 4-4 four, four on the board and I have nothing. So if they have any like red spells to do damage to my face, I die. I kind of prefer playing more blockers here, although that does definitely let Pilfering Hawk get in there. So I'm just going to play the Firewalker and hold up a Jarl. See what they have. Really wish I could kill two creatures this turn, but I can't. I can block Berg Strider with my 3-2 and then cast Jarl to kill the Berg Strider, but I have to wait until my 3-2 deals damage to it, so I can't play Jarl, kill something with it, and block, because I can't kill something with it until my other blocker has already dealt damage. That would be really solid if I could do that. I'm gonna do six damage to my one blocker. Okay. Well, now I think I'm going to go to one so that I can kill all their creatures. I could chump block there, but then I make everybody sack two and they still have the four for it. Oh god, the Axe Guard Cavalry is so bad for me. I don't have enough mana to kill two creatures and play another creature, so that's just going to be it, right? I guess if they have like a really good creature in their hand, maybe Valky can get there. They have a flyer, I guess. It is a land. All right, well, maybe held on to the Terror Grid's shadow too long there, but that is, I got a good game. That is definitely a game. And they didn't even know how close it was because I didn't get to reveal my Terra Grid shadow. Ooh, three losses. Oh, that was fast. That's one win and three losses. Well, that'll happen when you're new to the format for sure. Well, I still had fun. I think it was a really, uh, really cool format. Really fun time seeing what's uh, what's going on from everybody. It's going to be a really hard format to learn. I can tell already with all of the Fortel and all of the instant speed stuff, even turning like Raise the Draugr and Jarl the Forsaken, these kinds of effects that were sorcery speed a lot of the time in older formats, like turning that stuff into instant speed, even the Terrigid Shadow also used to be sorcery speed, um, definitely makes them a lot harder to, um, to play with. 
definitely a lot more complex gameplay, so I'm really going to have some trouble getting the gameplay down. But the drafting half, that seems uh, super fun, and I think we ended up with a, a solid deck uh, out of it. I think pretty much all of our losses were a lot closer than they looked. Sure, we were we were always at the life total disadvantage, but uh, we were consistently at the card advantage. Like against Nummy, there was that one turn where I went down to two, and I still had like four cards in hand. It obviously turned around really poorly for us. We were forced into double blocks and stuff like that. And then in that last game, I was always at the, uh, the card advantage at the end. It was just a matter of having a time to play Shadow really well. Um... That was brutal. I suppose there were several times we could have played Shadow to kill their 2-1 and their 1-2, but then I still have a bad time against the 4-4. But playing the Shadow earlier, I think, would have been... would have ended up better. We would have had a more solid chance at the game. Killing their Flyer and the 2-1, they would have ended up with only the 4-4 Giant on their board, and then after that, I could play my own 4-4 and try to, try to just trade 4-4s there. I don't know. Probably could have been went better, but uh, I definitely made uh, some some plays that did not pan out well. So that is going to the end. That is going to be the end of my very first Kaldheim draft ever. I think the format's really cool. I'm really excited to to get my teeth into it and really learn the format. So I'm going to be drafting all day on Twitch. Uh, so if you're watching this on the day of release, check out the link in the description right now. I will be there. I will be playing the format. I will be doing my best to get as good as possible uh, on the format as quickly as possible to bring you all the best commentary, best strategy uh, that I can. So as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow for another Kaldheim Draft.